Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Addison's disease. So let's get into it. So this is caused by damage to the adrenal glands. So there is a decreased production in cortisol and aldosterone. Primary Addison's is usually caused by an autoimmune disease where some secondary causes can include things like tumors on the pituitary and then recent surgery on the pituitary gland. When it comes to the signs and symptoms, you can remember steroid. So S is sodium and sugar are low. So they'll have low serum sodium and low blood glucose because remember, they have decreased cortisol and cortisol is responsible for retaining these things. T is for tired. They're going to feel tired and they're going to have weak muscles. E are for electrolytes. So you're going to see imbalances in those. They'll have increased potassium and calcium. R is for reproductive issues. In females, you might see irregular menses and in males, you might see erectile dysfunction. O, I had to sneak this one in here. Hypotension, so low blood pressure. I is for irritability or increased skin pigmentation. Sometimes this can be all over, so they look a little bit tan, or it can be splotchy, okay, so patches. And then D is for decreased weight, so they're losing weight unintentionally. They might be having diarrhea or depression. When it comes to testing for this disease, we'll check your electrolyte levels because remember you could have that increase of potassium and calcium. We're gonna do the ACTH stimulation test. So what this involves is they will measure your cortisol levels and then they will give you some synthetic ACTH and then they'll measure your levels again after. And then the insulin induced hypoglycemia test, very, very similar. So they're gonna measure your cortisol levels and your blood sugar. Then they're gonna give you a little bit of insulin and then they're gonna measure those levels again to see if it's made any changes. And then they also might wanna do a CT scan to see if there's anything going on in your adrenal glands and to check the overall size. When it comes to treatment, all treatment with Addison's involves medications. So we're going to give prednisone to replace cortisol, and we're going to give fludrocortisone to replace aldosterone. We also recommend a diet high in carbohydrates and protein, and they need to get enough salt in their diet, because remember their body is not retaining salt like it should, so they have low salt levels. So encouraging them to have sodium in their diet. We as the nurse want to monitor their glucose and potassium levels because they could get dangerously low their glucose and dangerously high their potassium. We recommend that people get annual screenings after they've been diagnosed with this. Do their best to decrease stress in their life. Um, and this is the kind of thing, if you're on these medications, since they're replacement meds, we don't want to stop them abruptly. That would not be safe. The signs and symptoms of Addison's disease usually take several months to manifest, so they happen over time. Something else called Addison's crisis occurs when they happen very quickly, and this is a medical emergency. So what is it? It's also called acute adrenal failure, and this is when we have extremely low cortisol levels, so dangerously low. So a way you can remember are the five S's. So S, the first one, is for shock and super high potassium levels, syncope, severe vomiting or diarrhea, super low blood pressure and low blood sugar, and then sudden pain, typically in the abdomen or the legs. And what do we do about this emergency, right? We need to help them. So we're going to give them IV cortisol treatments, right? Because that's what their body is missing. It's too low, so we need to bring it up. Typically, because they're going to have the low blood sugar, um, we're going to usually do like a D5 normal saline, because we need to bring that up. We need to give them glucose. 
And then of course, we need to monitor them. We need to monitor their lab values because that's what's gonna let us know if they're getting better. And then do a good neurological check on these patients. So that was my video on Addison's disease. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.